We'll take two questions, inshallah, if you brothers have any questions today concerning this lesson today. And that'll be it. Now, akhuna, hada wa hada. That's an excellent question, Ikhwani, as it relates to the leader who does ijtihad. He does everything within his power and his ability to arrive and to deduce a hukum, a particular rule in al-Islam. And then as a result of doing his ijtihad, he makes a mistake. Can we say that that particular leader is cheating? No, he's not cheating. Nor is that scholar cheating. And we like that question because that question is a question that is in defense of the scholars of Al-Islam. And it's also a question that protects us from being extreme. Because those people who don't like what a particular scholar says, for an example, they'll pronounce takfir upon him because he said, yes, it's permissible to do this or to do that. To use the kufar. It's permissible to use the kufar out of compulsion. We can use them. So that person says, he's a non-Muslim because he's helped. He's taken the kufar as a helper. So the Prophet told us, sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam, إِذَا اجْتَهَدَ حَاكِمْ فَأَصَابَ فَلَهُ أَجْرًا وَإِنْ أَخْدَأَ فَلَهُ أَجْرٌ وَاحِدٌ If the scholar or the leader, if they make an effort, they make ijtihad, and they get it right, they get two rewards. And if they get it wrong, they get one reward. And it can even be in riba. It can even be in riba. Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu said that riba and nasi was permissible and it's not haram. And it's haram. It's haram. But he said that that type of riba is permissible. We don't have time to go into what it is. But it's a type of riba. He said this is not riba. But it is riba. But he gets one reward. It can be something that the scholar made ijtihad in and it cost people their lives. Ali ibn Abi Talib and Muawiyah ibn Abi Sufyan radiallahu anhuma when those two groups clashed and people lost their lives like Ammar ibn Yasir and other than him they will get rewarded for that war that took place why? because they were mujtahidun so if the scholar or the leader makes ijtihad to the best of their ability and they get it wrong we don't say that that's cheating Unless he wasn't qualified to say that the lady can take her hijab off because she thinks there's going to be a problem, that's cheating. And that's not ijtihad. To say that the woman, if she feared that there would be verbal abuse, then that's not ijtihad, that's cheating. No one in his right mind will say something like that except a person who is out of his right mind or he wants to integrate at all costs. Wallahu a'ala. Naam akhi. The question is, Imam Ibn Taymiyyah, he made takfir upon the Tatars, although the Tatars are Muslim. But the point was the Tatars, they were ruling according to Yasir, which was the book of Chinese Khan. And they were not ruling according to Quran and Sunnah. That's why Imam Ibn Taymiyyah he made the fear upon them. He made jihad against them. So all these current rulers, not all. I mean, some aren't they worse than the Qatars? No, I don't think there's any ruler from the Muslims on the face of the earth who's worse than the Tatars. Anyone who knows the history of the Tatars and the murder of the Tatars. And he's fair and he's just, he's not going to make that comparison. It's worse than comparing apples with oranges. It's worse. As it relates to the Muslim rulers and those who are ruling over the Muslims today, the issue of a takfir, it is a hole. It's a deep hole and it's a dangerous hole that has thorns in it and fire. 
and burning oil. So everyone should avoid delving into the affair because Allah didn't make you responsible to be the one who figures this out. Listen to what the ulama of Al-Islam have to say, people of knowledge as it relates to pronouncing takfir on that leader or that leader. And that's it, you'll be okay. I don't understand. What is the problem with some people that we feel there's a responsibility that makes me uneasy and I'm not taking care of my responsibility that I'm not given a ruling for each and every ruler in, in, over the Muslims today, in the Muslim world today. If we died not knowing who's a kafir from amongst them, Allah is not going to hurt you, inshallah. If you die, there are some things that are farduain upon you that are taking more precedence over you knowing who are the Muslims from them and who are not the Muslims. And we're not giving our time and consideration to knowing about those things and taking care of those things as it relates to our personal lives and our ra'iya, those people we're, resp we're responsible for. And then we become preoccupied with Fulan and Alan from the leaders. And Allah is not going to ask you about him, nor is he going to ask him about you, Allahu Alam. You're going to die and there's no connection between you and him. So, in my opinion, the Tatars are not remotely similar to what the people are doing today. We don't pronounce takfir over people unless we have scholars who preceded us to that issue.